Today we're here with Star Major Wilson. Um, just tell us a little bit about your uh, career in the Army so far, Star Major. Okay. Um, I came in the Army in 1984 uh, under the delayed entry program, uh, where my initial uh, MOS, or what we call the Military uh, Occupational Specialty, was to be a medical supply specialist. I did that for about two years. And it seemed kind of boring, so I went on and said I wanted to do something a little more exciting. So um, at that time I was reserves, and uh, then I switched over to active duty. Uh, when I went active duty, I went into the infantry, 11 Bravo. Um, and since then, I've been an 11 Bravo uh, infantry soldier. Uh, I've uh, been uh, to Germany twice, Berlin, Germany. I've been to Erlangen, Germany. I've been to Korea twice, uh, Camp Casey, Korea, and Tong uh, Korea. Um, I've been to Fort Ord, California, um, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, now all the NTCs, uh, JRTCs, um, to uh, Iraq twice, excuse me, three times, and I've been to Afghanistan all in a row from 06 to 07, 08, 09. 2010, 2011, and 2012. So every year I deployed um, and had an opportunity to uh, to uh, fight in this war on terrorism. Now my last uh, couple of assignments was was uh, um, as a operations sergeant major for 27 Cav up at Fort Hood, uh, Texas, and then upon my uh, journey there, uh, my final journey is here. Uh, at Texas A&M as a Chief Military Science Instructor uh, at the Corps, uh, with the Corps of Cadets for an Army ROTC. Um, first, what do you expect from a new lieutenant and what is the most common thing for a second lieutenant to fail at? Um, what I expect from a new lieutenant uh, that comes to my unit, and it, to me in any capacity, it doesn't matter whether he's coming up to my brigade or battalion staff uh, or if he's coming to a company, is, is honesty. Uh, it, that's going to be one of his, his ground uh, or foundations that he must have is, is integrity, honesty. Uh, it must be committed to what he's been tasked to do uh, as, a, as a lieutenant, which is lead soldiers. Um, and if he's able to do that and be committed to it, um, humble himself in, in, in some instances, but at the same time be able uh, to, to stand and, and, and fight for what's right. Um, for not only his soldiers but for, for himself. I think that that, uh, that will make him a strong lieutenant. Okay. Um, things that I see them failing at um, is when, when a lieutenant comes in arrogant. Um, and, and we sometimes have that when, when we've completed ranger school and we've completed you know, these, these high-end schools that the Army has put us in. Uh, and we feel as though that you know we're a little bit better than everyone else, um, when we really don't understand the simple fact that you know that was just a school, it was a prestigious school, but there is more to my position, my job, and understanding what is expected of me than that one school. So that's where your humbleness and your 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 honesty and, and commitment comes in to be able to receive instruction uh, from your seniors. Um, from your 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 uh, battle buddy, which would be a platoon sergeant, or, or, or your company commander, or your fellow platoon leaders, uh, and, and to be able to say, "Hey, look, I know I'm not better than you. Um, however, I'm gonna do my best to be the best at what I do." Um, if you have that that uh, mentality uh, and not be cocky and and, and you know, um, like I said before, arrogant, then I think you can be very very successful. And so bottom line, you know, you go in, you know, with a with a shut mouth and open ears. So, what training do you, we not receive as cadets? Do you think we should implement in order to become a better and stronger second lieutenant? Um, relationships. Um, I think that 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 is a a, a big thing, and and that's what's going to make your platoon or make you as a leader. Uh, is the, your effectiveness uh, with your relationship with your, your personnel. Um, am I saying that you, you, know, you, you need to 
you know, be buddy buddy with your guys. They need to understand how to deal with different uh, situations, um, different cultures. And as a young lieutenant coming in, we're talking a, a, a 22 year old, 23 year old um, person who is trying to deal with um, or help a person um, that may be, you know, either twice their age or, you know, have a few years on them, you know, 10, 15 years on them. So being able to identify and deal with different uh, relationships and different issues is something that I think would be very vital um, um, for, for the Corps of Cadets to understand. Okay. What would be the qualities, characteristics, behaviors you look for in a tenant? You kind of mentioned this earlier with honesty and uh, humbleness. Um, qualities, um, the big thing I would say is, like I said, is, is, is meek and humble. Um, but at the same time, they want to stand his ground. Um, some other qualities, what I first look for is, is physical fitness. Um, if you're unable to carry your own load and your own weight and meet a basic minimum, not very challenging standard, then I don't think that you would be successful as a lieutenant uh, in any capacity, combat arms or low density MRSs. Um, so physical fitness is probably one of the, the biggest, biggest uh, things. Uh, the next thing is the ability to communicate. Um, how you present yourself, and communication isn't just the voice of me telling you what to do, it's the, the body language. Uh, it's my own personal examples that I set. Um, will communicate to you what type of leader I'm going to be, and that's what I'm looking in that lieutenant. If that lieutenant is squared away and he's in shape and he's coming to work and he's got, you know, clean clothes on, um, you know, clean haircut, you know, and, and, and is squared away that way, then I know for a fact that I probably could learn something from him and he's going to go far. But if he comes to work and I have to tell him to shave, if he's unfit, you know, if he's coming to work and he's got old soiled clothes on, you know, every time and, and, and he can't keep up his hygiene, then we probably are going to have some problems. So. Um, what piece of life's advice do you wish all second lieutenants should know? Um, the dumb question is the question that isn't asked. And the reason why I say that is, instead of saying, I don't know, and leaving it at that, um, I don't know, but I'm going to find out, is a better way to find out and educate yourself and be a more productive and successful leader. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's through honesty. If you don't know something, it's okay. I don't know it. But I'm going to find out, you know, and I'll come back and I'll let you know. But if you settle for the first no, then you're probably going to be a pretty weak leader. The last question is, what was the last leadership book you read? Oh, um, I would have to say it was an, an, an army manual. Um, the NCO, uh, Non-Commissioned Officers uh, Development Guide. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, oh man, I want to say back in the day it was TC uh, TC-7, uh, but now it's uh, TC-25-7, uh, which is a leadership guide on the communications of a non-commissioned officer with his his uh, officer. Uh, and I think that that's very important. It establishes helps you establish a relationship and a rapport with your um, your battle buddy, so to speak. And I think that if each NCO reads that, if each officer reads that, goes through it, it's a short read, very short read, um, circles the, the highlights in there that they find true, and then they both come together and sit down and talk about it. You will see a, a, team, a team that develops that is um, inseparable. Uh, and it's probably vital, will be vital to any organization. So, I mean, I think that's that's one of the best books. And I wish I, I wish I had a copy here. I think I took mine home, but it's a very good book to read. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for your answers and thank you for your time, Sergeant Major. Anytime. Anytime.